Civilians are evacuated from pro-Russian rebel-held areas of eastern Ukraine as the breakaway republics order military mobilizations. The fear of a Russian attack on Ukraine became the main subject of debate at the Munich Security Conference attended by multiple heads of state. In the penultimate day of the Winter Olympics, China, Sweden and the Netherlands all win gold, although Norway remains at the top of the medal table. The scars of increased shelling between Ukrainian forces and the forces of rebel-held areas in the Donbass region. On Saturday, top Ukrainian military officials came under fire when taking a tour of the front lines. And now, separatist leaders announce a full military mobilization. I appeal to all the men of the Republic who are able to hold weapons in their hands to stand up for their families, their children, wives, mothers. Together we will achieve the desired and necessary victory for us all. We will protect Donbass and all Russian people. And in the middle, innocent civilians. An evacuation of women, children and retirees to Russia from the Donetsk and Luhansk breakaway republics is now underway. Both claim that a military invasion from Kiev is imminent, although the Ukrainian government has denied this. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin personally oversees military drills with his Belarusian counterpart. They involve ballistic missiles such as these and add to Western fears that they could be used as a cover for an invasion. Although Moscow has constantly denied this. Yet so far, in Kiev's Maidan Square, scene of the revolution of 2014 that swept away a pro-Russian government, there's a distinct lack of panic. In general, as you can see in the streets of Kiev and other cities, you know, people enjoy this, something that we call uh, reasonable negligence about this. Uh, so. Everybody keeps uh, pretty calm, pretty consolidated, uh, and I, I think it's a good sign, it's, it's a good argument against uh, any sort of military action against Ukraine. On the front line, these sounds are now increasingly common. As the situation deteriorates, many soldiers are braced for the worst. With tension at its height in Ukraine, a looming invasion from Russia was the main talking point at the Munich Security Conference. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson sat down with his Ukrainian counterpart, Volodymyr Zelensky. Johnson called for unity among allies, stressing the shock that an invasion would represent. Zelensky, for his part, gave an emboldened speech concerning the Russian threat. We we're going to protect our country, with or without the support of our partners, whether they'll give us hundreds of pieces of modern arms or 5,000 helmets. We equally appreciate the support, but everyone needs to understand. This is not some kind of donation that Ukraine should be asking for. This is not just a broad gesture that Ukraine should be bowing down for. This is your contribution to the security of Europe and the world for which Ukraine has served as a shield for the last eight years. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris warned Moscow that it will face an even bigger NATO presence in case of an attack. We will impose far-reaching financial sanctions and export controls. We, we will target Russia's financial institutions and key industries. And we will target those who are complicit and those who aid and abet this unprovoked invasion. The EU said it has already developed a robust and comprehensive package of financial sanctions with the US, the UK and Canada in case Russia attacks Ukraine. If the Kremlin strikes, we can impose high costs and severe consequences on Moscow's economic interests. The Kremlin's dangerous thinking, which comes straight out of a dark past, may cost Russia a prosperous future. For the first time in 12 years, no Russian representative attended the conference. But countries like China defended the Kremlin in the wake of the conflict. Foreign Minister Wang Yi said that Russia's concern about Ukraine and NATO must be equally respected. 
Greek authorities say 12 people are still missing, eight of them Bulgarian, after a blaze swept through a ferry sailing from Greece to Italy early on Friday. Firefighters on Saturday were still battling to put out the flames on the Euro Ferry Olympia. 278 people have been rescued and taken to the island of Corfu. We were waiting for four hours before the rescuers came. We were in the fire in the night. We only felt the fire underneath our feet. 250 people were screaming, shouting. Some of them were jumping into the sea. Some of our friends are still missing. We don't know where they are. Divers have been brought in to widen the search for those still missing. Media reported that 10 of those rescued were taken to hospital with breathing difficulties and minor injuries. Officials said they still don't know how the fire started. At this year's Berlinale, one of Europe's most prestigious film festivals, the jury presided by filmmaker M. Night Shyamalan awarded the biggest prizes, also called Bears, to a majority of female directors. And it's Carla Simon from Catalonia, Spain, that won the Supreme Award, the Golden Bear for Best Film. <laughs> Her movie, shot with non-professional actors, takes place over the course of a summer and follows a family of peach growers whose livelihood is threatened when the owner of their land decides to replace the trees with solar panels. To be honest, the film doesn't really have a happy ending because there's not much hope in family farming at the moment. But I think it's a movie about the importance of taking care of each other and being together in times of need. French filmmaker Claire Denis won Best Director Award with both sides of the blade. The movie, starring French actress Juliette Binoche, tells the story of a woman caught between her current partner, actor Vincent Landon, and her ex. <laughs> I chose to tell a story with Vincent Landon, Juliette Binoche and Grégoire Collin. It's the actors that direct me in my movies. I don't direct them. I really need them and I love them. The German-Turkish actress Meltem Captain won everyone's hearts at the festival and was awarded Best Lead Performance for her role in Rabia Kurnatz vs. George Bush, a true story of a mother's fight to release her wrongly imprisoned son. I, I would dedicate this award to yeah, Rabia Kurnatz and all the mothers whose love is stronger than borders. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. A real-life injustice remade as a light comic drama delighted festival goers. Zugang zu Mandanten und gerichtlicher Überprüfung der Inhaftierung. Und was heißt Rabia Kunas vs. George W. Bush? Ja, dass du gegen den Präsidenten der Vereinigten Staaten klagst. Wer? Ich? Ja. Du. The films selected for this year's Berlinale are screening until Sunday evening. China's Su Yi Wenjing and Hong Kong win gold in the pair's figure skating by just 63 hundredths of a point. The pair, who missed out by another razor-thin margin on the gold four years ago, earned China its ninth gold medal at the Games. Sweden's Niklas Edin captained the Nordic nation's curling team to gold, establishing himself as the most decorated skipper in history. They beat Britain 5-4 in the first extra-end final in Olympic history. Irene Shouten has won an incredible third gold medal at the Beijing Olympics, outsprinting Canada's Ivany Blondin to win the women's mass start speed skating event. She also won the 3,000 and 5,000 meters. And in the last event of the men's speed skating, Bart Swings of Belgium captures the gold medal in the mass start event. He improved on the silver he won in Pyeongchang four years ago in a stunning finish. The Russian Alexander Bolshinov sprinted to his third Olympic gold medal, winning a 30-kilometer mass start cross-country ski race that was rescheduled and shortened because of strong wind and freezing temperatures. 
So, as things stand at the Games, Norway is in the lead with 15 gold medals, followed by Germany on 11, China on 9, and the USA, Sweden and the Netherlands on 8 each. The two-week Games are set to close on Sunday.